I can't remember a show that had me in tears with laughter and in tears with sadness. I say this every week, but episode 7 was the best yet. Emotional depth, LOL moments, and great action. This is my review and discussion for Peacemaker, episode 7. What's going on DC fans? Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host The Viking. Make sure you give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for a brand new video every single day. What I said in the opening of this video was what I tweeted after I watched the episode. And James Gunn himself, the creator of this show, retweeted it. So that was pretty cool. But I mean it. And I think that James Gunn not only has made a very unique comic book live action entry, but also a unique series for me. Because as I said... I can't remember a show that made me laugh this hard and also cry this hard because this episode, the opening scene, Peacemaker looking back at the moment where he killed his own brother, looking at himself in the mirror, John Cena's acting has excelled under James Gunn, big time. And later on in the episode, when he kills his dad, he starts to cry. John Cena, for me, has really improved as an actor. And I've been saying for weeks, actually I've been saying... This, since the Suicide Squad came out, John Cena has found his role. This is this role was made for him. He's fantastic. He really, really is. And this episode for me was the best yet. It had a mixture of everything and worked. And the ending with the massive worm was, oh my god, the finale is going to be huge. One episode to go and I've enjoyed Peacemaker reviewing it every week discussing it online because for me it's a very fascinating entry into the comic book live action genre movies and shows and this is a sequel to the suicide squad and it all blends together very much even john economist's character hardcore they were in the suicide squad and the way that their characters have developed over these seven episodes going into the eight episode has been really well written and james gunn from even last week's kind of piano sequence it's simple things like this that just makes this show different. People were saying that James Gunn is not a good director. He's not a good writer. For me, he is proving a lot of people wrong. He really is. People say, oh, he was only a success at Marvel because that's a formula that works. The Marvel formula can never fail. He went and he did the Suicide Squad for DC. Yes, it didn't blow up the box office. You can use every excuse under the sun. But it didn't do that well. But for me, the film was great. It really was. And Peacemaker is even better and James Gunn may have found the platform that suits him best television these streaming shows week to week because he's just been absolutely terrific so I have a review and recap of the episode here we'll go through it we'll talk about what we liked what we didn't like and hopefully you guys can continue the conversation in the chat below and apologies if my voice seems off and stuff like that. I don't feel well today, but I'm still doing the review because Peacemaker put me in a good, good mood. Okay, this comes from FullCircleCinema.com. Peacemaker, Episode 7, Spoiler Recap Review. Stop Dragging My Heart Around is the episode name for Peacemaker, Episode 7. Directed by Brad Anderson. This episode is filled with emotional heft and action. And that's no surprise considering that every episode of Peacemaker thus far has had more or less the same type of balance. James Gunn's writing for this show's first season has thus far been incredible. All the tension, group dynamics and ominous flashbacks have been built up to have an incredible payoff in this week's episode. The opening scene this week is the long-awaited flashback that's been teased. There have been glimpses of it throughout the last couple of episodes, but this week we finally get the full story. Chris and his brother Keith, bonding over their love of metal and rock music, have a nice moment before they're brought out by their father, forced to fight each other in a pit as their father eggs them on. As Augie Smith berates his own two sons and provokes them to fight, Chris unintentionally lands a deadly blow. His older brother, foaming at the mount and convulsing, dies. Augie 
berates Chris, saying he killed his brother. The flashback is emotionally taxing for viewers and Chris. This scene immediately transitions to present day, with Chris having a breakdown in the bathroom as the television in the other room reports about him. From this point, the image of the peacemaker crying cuts, transitioning to the team song. It's a jarring and troubling transition, and that is no doubt the intention of the editing. The whole episode feels uneasy. Peacemaker has been building to the conflict between Peacemaker and the Butterflies, and Peacemaker with his father. Now that it's finally here, things haven't felt more dangerous for Chris. Intense and angry, Chris leaves with Adrian and Economus. Peacemaker chooses to leave without the team to kill the cow. Because of this, Harcourt, Adebayo and Mern are left alone. Project Butterfly has been separated. This couldn't have come at a worse time for them. With all the walls closing in on them, Harcourt confronts Adebayo. By this point, she's figured out that Adebayo planted the diary. It's the first of many confrontations in this episode. The two characters air out their frustrations with each other. Brooks and Holland give this scene their all. It's something that's uninterrupted by a more tragic development. The butterflies now having access to Captain Locke's memories ambush the location they're staying at. Mern distracts the butterflies, encouraging Harcourt and Adebayo to finish what they started. Mern is eventually overpowered and killed. It's a tragic moment in this episode. Moreover, the actor that plays Mern makes the most of his final scene. It's a sad departure. Peacemaker unknowingly being tracked by the White Dragon, gets ambushed in an equally emotional scene. White Dragon and Peacemaker have their standoff that has been building up all season. Vigilante and Economus do their best to help Peacemaker. However, in the end, Augie is clearly Chris's biggest demon that he needs to deal with alone. The confrontation drags out for most of the episode, cut in between that and an odd judo master subplot. The pacing of this episode isn't as consistent as previous ones, but the premise is still nonetheless captivating. We get to see some expertly choreographed action. Specifically, Hardcore takes on Judo Master in a satisfying one-on-one -on -one fight. Eventually, after some assistance from Vigilante and Economus, Peacemaker is face-to-face -face with his dad in a depowered white dragon suit. The two are finally on an even playing field. Cena puts some truly raw emotion on display when lashing out at his father. Robert Patrick helps to carry some of the weight of the scene. He puts on an absolutely terrifying and heart-wrenching performance. The way in which he berates his own son is sad to see. Moreover, Cena as Chris finally lashes out and uses all of the pent-up anger and resentment he has for his father. Rightly deserved and a satisfying scene to watch. Eventually, this confrontation ends the only way it can, with Peacemaker killing his father. In the middle of his father berating him once again, Chris finally pulls the trigger, ending his father's life. This scene is absolutely heartbreaking, as we see Peacemaker at his absolute lowest. James Gunn and the episode director Brad Anderson work in tandem as writer and director to craft a truly satisfying ending to this sick relationship between father and son. With Eagly injured in the scuffle, they take him to the vet, where Adebayo and Harcourt meet up with them. With almost every member of the team discouraged and at their lowest, they find a new leader. Jennifer Holland shows a new side to Harcourt, stepping up and providing leadership with Mern gone. While the sense of belonging and family might not be there for Peacemaker anymore, he still decides to step up. The rest of the team does too, and yet another incredible slow-mo walk, eagerly included. Overall, the sixth episode, seventh episode this should be, of Peacemaker, while containing some pacing issues, still makes for a fantastic episode. Everything has been set up for one final confrontation with the butterflies and the reveal of a monstrous and gigantic cow-leech-like creature leaves viewers excited. The finale for Peacemaker is sure to be something special, and that comes from FullCircleCinema.com. Totally agree. Cannot wait for next week's episode. Because the massive worm reveal 
gets me excited to see how they're going to try and take down this monster. And also the butterflies are there as well. This episode for me was the best yet, but all seven episodes have been a lot of fun. You know, laugh out loud moments. It has emotional depth. And James Gunn as a writer-director has just been fantastic. And the team that he has brought in, including the director for this one, Brad Anderson, have all done amazingly well. The music again is top-notch. My Spotify playlist is amazing because of this show, and that's awesome. And the White Dragon deserved to die. He was terrible to his son. He's the reason one of his sons is dead. You know, it just, for that kind of relationship to end like that, it was sad, but it was necessary because it was something that was holding Peacemaker down. And it made Peacemaker into the person that he is now, which is sad, but also it might be good because he might save the day. In terms of next week's episode, because Earth's only hope is Peacemaker right now and his group of misfits. Now, maybe the Justice League will show up. I don't know. I expect to see a cameo next week. There's been rumors. I won't say what they are in case you haven't heard about them and you want to be surprised. I don't know if it's true, but I I just won't say them anyway. But yeah, looking forward to next week's episode. Great episode this week again. Judo Master kind of had a random subplot as the article said but he'll probably come around because what does he know because remember when John Cena's peacemaker and him were fighting just before he got shot by Adebayo he was saying something like "Eh, listen to me the butterflies are not what you think what was he talking about and will we see Amanda Waller show up as well because I think that do you know the way in the Suicide Squad Amanda Waller was kind of covering up the kind of big operation by the American government? Peacemaker was sent on a separate mission. And then in the Peacemaker series, Adebayo is sent on a separate mission. But I don't think Adebayo knows everything. I think Amanda Waller is hiding something from her daughter and the team. Big time, because she's not stupid whatsoever. But what exactly is she hiding? And how did Judo Master know if he does know? I hope that's resolved in the last episode, or it will be a big what the hell was that moment you know because i want to see what judo master knew looking forward to seeing the big battle against the butterflies next week and that giant worm which is massive and looks absolutely scary but guys that's my review discussion thoughts of peacemaker episode 7 give a thumbs up subscribe to the channel but get into the comment section let me know your thoughts very intrigued what you have to say about the giant worm and also the debt of white dragon do you think it was necessary and what kind of scenes got you emotional in this episode if any for me it was the two scenes with peacemaker the opening scene you know watching his brother die and also shooting his dad his reaction to that after great acting by john cena great action top-notch episode guys thanks for watching see you in the next video